can't wait to get my hands on Mr. Maskell. Please don't do anything silly. Silly? My sister. And look what he's done to you. I loved him, Harry. I know, my dear. But no man's worth trying to kill yourself for. Steady, darling. The hospital's only a couple of miles now. Are you by any chance going to London? Well... I'm really quite harmless, you know. All right, then. Jump in. Thank you. Do you live in London? No, I'm just going down a little business. How about you? Oh, I'm almost Cockney, Kensington. What are you doing in this part of the world? Just joyriding. That's what comes of having a new car. This is a lovely job, isn't she? Mm-hmm. Daddy gave it to me for my 21st birthday. Oh? And when was the great event? Last Thursday. Well, I'm afraid I haven't got anything quite as exciting as that to offer, but you're welcome to a cigarette. Oh, no, thank you. I'm sorry I haven't any cork tips. How did you know I only smoke cork tips? Well, lots of people do, don't they? Well, yes, but... Don't worry, your party tomorrow night's going to be a great success. How on earth did you know I was giving a party tomorrow night? Well, you are, aren't you? Yes, but I don't see how you could possibly... Uh, would you mind stopping at that call box up on the left there? I've got rather an urgent call to make. All right. I shall be a moment. All right. Mayfair 0007, please. Yes. I will send details of my next production hit the top on Monday. In the meantime, perhaps you would pencil in the circuit bookings. Yours, etc., etc., Bernard J. Maskell. Don't forget the J, Miss Freeman. Doesn't do to be too familiar. Bernard J. Maskell Productions. Is that Mr. Maskell's office? It's Harry Benton here. Look, I'm very sorry, but I'm afraid I can't quite make this appointment with Mr. Maskell at 4.30 this afternoon. Do you think he could put it back till 6? It's Mr. Benton. He says he can't get here till 6 o'clock. Will that be right, Mr. Maskell? Certainly. Yes, Mr. Maskell says that'll be fine, Mr. Benton. He can? Oh, good. Right, well, I'll see you at 6 o'clock, then. Right, goodbye. One must always accommodate a possible backer, my dear. Of course, Mr. Maskell. Will tomorrow do for that letter? You did say I could leave early today. Why, so I did. Of course. Oh, there is one other little matter. Yes, sir. A personal one, Miss Freeman. I'd like you to have a little dinner with me tomorrow night. Oh, I couldn't, sir. Really? But why not? My boyfriend wouldn't let me. Really? <laughs> you have a lot to learn, my dear. Haven't you? 
Well, he, he's very jealous. And very rich and successful too, no doubt. Uh, let me... Mary, tell your little man you have some business in town with me. You won't regret it. Oh, sir. The secret of success, my dear, is being nice. The right people. Good night, Mary. Good night. Good night. What do you mean? Oh, I don't quite know. It's just that one minute you're gay and the next silent and a bit sad. I'm sorry, it's very rude of me. No, oh, not at all. Probably my fault anyway. I often depress people. You don't depress me in the slightest. It's just that you remind me very much of my sister. She was lovely too. Was? Yes, she's dead. Killed in a car crash on her way to hospital. Oh, I'm sorry. I just I can't get her out of my mind, which is probably the reason why I act a little oddly. But if I'd known, I wouldn't have dreamed oh, forget of... it, please. You've been very sweet. I only wish we'd met on some day when I hadn't got a previous engagement. Well, this is it. Just on time, too. Thanks very much. Perhaps we'll meet again. On my next 21st birthday. Well, I'd love to see you again, even later this evening, but I'm afraid I've only got to seven. Well, hurry then, or you'll be late. Goodbye, and take care of the speed bird. Bye. satisfying to be a successful impresario. Better than being an unsuccessful one, you know. <laughs> so you're interested in show business, Mr. Benton, eh? Yes. But I'm one or two questions I'd like to ask, and they tell me that you are the man who knows all the answers. Mm. I wouldn't say that. Tell me exactly why did you contact me in the first place? Well, I've heard so much about you, Mr. Maskell. I'm sure it's very kind of people to recommend me. Well, they say that you have a great talent for Picking girls. If I have a secret, Mr. Benton, that's it. My shows sparkle because I put gems into them. <laughs> Live gems. My girls are the best money can buy. There's nothing like beautiful women to pack in the customers, eh? I'm sure you're quite right. Now, Mr. Benton, my secretary tells me that you're interested in making an investment. Yes, it rather depends what you mean by an investment. Certainly, but the more you put in, the more you take out. That is, if you deal with me. Make it sound very simple, Mr. Maskell. Oh, it isn't as simple as all that. That's a very lovely girl. What's her name? The young lady who worked for me once. I can't quite make out the signature. The name was um, Cooper. Susan Cooper. <laughs> Don't worry, Mr. Benton. Any show you back will have plenty like her. Susan Cooper. Very pretty name. Very pretty girl. Where's she now? I'm afraid she's dead. Dead? Yes. Died rather tragically in a car crash about six months ago. Such a nice girl. Always came to me with her troubles. Wish I could have been more helpful. Yes, I'm sure. Now, Mr. Benton, let's get back to business. What sum had you in mind? 
Those mountains have always fascinated me, Mr. Maskell. I remember several years ago seeing a production of Cinderella. A very attractive one, beautifully put on, lovely clothes. Tell me, why are you lying about Susan Cooper? Susan Cooper? Lying? Yes, lying. You were sorry for her. You helped her. You killed her. I killed Susan Cooper. He must be mad. She died in a car crash. Yes, she did on her way to hospital. But she'd have died anyway. Because she tried to commit suicide. On account of you. This is ridiculous. Get out of my office. Very well. Perhaps the police will persuade you. It's out of order, Masco. I'll soon settle this. You don't need a key. The door is not locked. Come here. Sit down, Masco. If you've changed your mind about leaving. Well? Huh. I don't know where you got this idea. It's not true. I was friendly with Susan Cooper. To commit suicide over me? It's ridiculous. Why should she? It just doesn't make sense. Then I'll tell you what does make sense. She was going to have your child, Maskell, and that wouldn't have been very convenient, would it? Bernard J. Maskell, great impresario involved in case with young actress. Wonderful publicity. So you took the nice, easy course, deny it all, and let the silly girl find her own way out. She paid Maskell. Now it's your turn. If it's a question of money. Money? How much is a life worth? How much do you want? I haven't got any cash in the office tonight, but tomorrow. Tomorrow? Let me assure you, Maskell, tomorrow never comes. Keep away from me, whoever you are. Cooper's the name. Harry Cooper. He was killed in a car crash with her. Was I? If you come in here, I'll fire. I'll tell you, I'll fire. Why don't you, Masco? One more step and I will. There you are. But there's still two more bullets. Why don't you use them?
There's no sign of anyone at the front. Nor at the back. He couldn't have jumped for it, could he? No. Impossible at that speed. Pretty hefty whack. Yes. Yeah. A comic head of tail of it. Well, he seems to have, whoa, vanished into thin air. Well, either my eyesight needs testing, or my brain. After this, I think I'd better retire. Don't worry. When the chief hears about this, <laughs> you'll have to. <laughs> 